So the only way that that pain will later manifest itself is in the the sores that you develop around the mouth. Or well, what's the well, connection well, for, between... For, 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 for others, those things don't show up. Yeah. They only show up when you have a lowered immunity. Ah, when, okay. your, when your immunity goes uh, low, mm. um, that's when those take the opportunity to show up. They're actually uh, they're, they're optimistic. Come rain, come sunshine. Switch my heart and do you, you will find It's love for you All I got is love for you Oh yeah, yeah. There's no lie I will hold you What's up guys? How are you guys doing? Did you miss me? I know you missed me Oh I'm doing the whole process of making coffee You know what? I'll start making coffee Like showing you how I do the whole thing I'm an expert brewer, actually. But you're welcome to the show. If you're not subscribed, ooh, please subscribe. We'll claim that later. Hit that notification bell and share. Subscriptions alone on YouTube are decorations if you don't hit that bell. And then you won't get a chance to see your favorite guy and whatnot. Yeah, the show is available Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, uh, 20 hours Central African time right here on YouTube. And you can listen to the podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. You're welcome to Amazing Minds, Zambia's first late night show. So Mondays are for political discussions. Wednesdays are for the educative segment. And we've been having interesting conversations this past few Wednesdays. And today's Wednesday again here for our educative segment. And Fridays are for... Bible Talks. Uh, we just did Bible Talks this past week. I try to keep track of the subjects we do. Uh, gifts of the Spirit. Yeah. Uh, last week, Wednesday, we had Dr. Elijah. No, 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 no. Dr. Cholwe Shatewa is a doctor from Ear, Nose, and Throat from the University Teaching Hospital. And he taught us a lot about um, everything that encompasses the ears, nose, and throat. And today in studio, we have Dr. Mpundu, who is a doctor... A dentist he's been a doctor for over 20 years in the dental uh, space and he has been around on tv radio you can catch him in many places talking dental and he just told me that this month is dental uh, awareness month you're welcome doc on the show thank you very much or is it to the show you're welcome to the show thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh we're glad to have you here i am I was doing some research on dental health and asking Google some questions recently. I was shocked by just how much I didn't know about. I even learned that uh, apparently when you do not brush your teeth before sleeping, that can have a long-term effect on your heart. I don't know how, how true that is, but yeah, I learned very strange stuff that I would like you to really uh, get us into today. So you're welcome. To yeah. the show, maybe you can give us a brief uh, introduction to who you are and okay. your uh, work. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, so my name, as you put it, I'm Dr. Gabriel Mpundu. I'm a dental surgeon. Yeah. Uh, based at Levy Mwanawasa University Teaching Hospital. Yeah. Slash Levy Mwanawasa Medical University. Um, yeah. And so. I've, I've I've been practicing dentistry since 1999. Okay, 1999. 1999. Um, first as a dental therapist. Yeah. Uh, which is uh, the the lower level of a of a dentist. Yeah. And then uh, went to I to advance my studies in uh, Zimbabwe at University of Zimbabwe. Yeah. So, Where did you say you got your initial? The, the initial the, the initial one from here in Zambia we have a training school uh, in Thorn Park. In Thorn Park. Yes. Okay. Thorn Park. So that's where we train the dental assistants and, yeah. and the dental therapists, plus the dental technologists. Okay. So the the, the program has now been merged with uh, Levi Manawasa Medical University. Okay. Uh, yeah. So basically that's where we're training them, and they can only go up to a certain level in terms of scope of what they can do yeah 
So being hungry for more knowledge and more experience, I ventured out, uh, went to extend my studies for a period of six years in, uh, in Zimbabwe at the University of Zimbabwe. Okay. Came back in uh, 2012 and continued my practice. Uh, I don't know whether it's blowing my own trumpet, but I've been, I've been uh, at, at the helm of leadership for the dental fraternity. Uh, okay. the, the, the last being uh, the, the, the vice president for the Zambia Dental Association. Oh. I, and also I've served on the Zambia Medical Association Executive Committee at, at the national level. Yeah. And also at Lusaka chapter level for the Zambia Medical Association because dental surgeons yeah. are also members of the Zambia Medical Association. Okay, yeah. okay. So Because you're considered doctors as well. We are doctors. We, you, you are doctors. It's, 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 it's not that we are considered. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are, um, like if you will do the training, yeah. you, you, you realize that you're in the same class with the general doctors mm. up to all the way, maybe just one, one year, that's why we split. Okay. To do just maybe one or two courses, which the general doctors do and I don't do. Yeah. And then during our time together, we, we, we branch out and specialize in dentistry. Okay. Yeah. Also, there is, you start out together, then you eventually both branch out into different. E yes. Where, where the guys go and do other courses, we venture mm -hmm. out and do our dental related courses yeah yeah so there are things about the teeth that doctors general doctors don't know a lot that they would have to come to you for a lot a lot so we, we, we work as a as a team yeah where they end is where i start from mm. so that uh if there's if there were a challenge uh i'm not so comfortable as saying teeth only because it's the whole head and neck oh yeah okay uh, maybe explain, break that down for me, because uh, I've always understood dentistry to be the teeth and maybe the gums. Uh, that, so that, that, so that, that, I would like to have that, a full that, understanding. That, that is actually the small component. That's what I was doing before I went to Zimbabwe. Okay. Concentrating on teeth and gums. Teeth and gums. Uh, but then when you advance, hmm. you, you start looking at the head and neck. You are involved in um, management of conditions that affect the tissues that surround the mouth or that are within the mouth yeah uh, like for oral cancers oral traumas and a lot of other illnesses that are not particularly uh, to do with dental decay mm. yeah so there is more to it personally i also thought i'm going to do dentistry yeah <laughs> how, how do i go and study three years just to study teeth then I started realizing that there is more actually. Yeah. Even the time we are going to go and do our bachelor's, you 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 get to realize that there's actually more that you can do, but unfortunately, this is what is not known by the people. Yeah. And and so you find that, for for the ordinary person, a dentist just looks at teeth, and you're only interested to see the dentist if you feel your teeth are dirty, if you feel your teeth are rotten. Mm. If you, if you want to do something about your teeth, mm. that's when you remember the dentist. But there are other things. Uh, I wish one day we can change the format of this podcast. Yeah. So that we, we work together for for one day. Yeah. We can. In, in we, we could department. actually come and shoot something from your office. Maybe yeah. we get a a, a session, yeah. uh, dental session, and we. Yeah, for as, long as, for as long as we just follow the legal pro pro procedures of getting consent. And, ah, okay. That's and, that's and, fine. You can guide us with... Permission from the owners of the hospital, which is the Ministry of Health. Okay. Uh, we, we, you can shoot that. Okay. You can guide us on yeah. uh, the compliance aspect of things. As a matter of fact, I'm a, yeah. <laughs> I'm a compliance person. You know, I'm an accountant by profession. Oh, good. And many people don't know that. But I work in uh, compliance and tax. Oh, good. So I really love those procedures and whatnot. So you can help us. Yeah. I think that would help us actually widen the scope of what we can do on the show if true. we know how we can get clearance for certain yeah, true, true. for certain things. Because we do have, I ha particularly have interest in a lot of medical, uh, medical stuff, medical knowledge. I like to learn about such things. So it's a great opportunity to have someone 
with your experience in studio. Yeah. So you've been working for about 11 years post uh, your Zimbabwe studies? Yes. Okay. And that's, that's when the scope of your work increased from just the teeth to... How often yeah. should an average person visit the dentist? Uh, twice a year. Every, twice a year. Every six months. Whether you have a problem or you do not have. Yeah. Just the way we service our vehicles. Mm. The body must be serviced, especially the mouth, because you realize that the mouth is the mirror for your general health. Okay. Most of these illnesses that we find around, yeah, they either enter from the mouth or they manifest uh, in the mouth. Yeah. Things like malaria, you have your bad taste, measles, you have your complex spots, and all the other illnesses, they'll have a connection to the mouth. mouth so it, it gives you an indicator that something is wrong somewhere yeah you've seen people when they have a headache which they didn't know about they'll have those uh yes uh, yes yes those, those, those sores yes so it's, it's it's generally an indicator of that something is going wrong in the body what exactly happens with someone having a headache that they didn't know about how does that happen well probably they were sleeping or maybe when you're sleeping, or could it be that you have taken something that is suppressing that pain? Probably, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So the only way that that pain will later manifest itself is in the the sores that you develop around the mouth. Or well, what's the connection well, for, between for, for 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 others? Those things don't show up. Yeah. They only show up when you have a lowered immunity. Ah. When okay. your when your immunity goes low. Mm. Um, that's when those take the opportunity to show up. They're actually uh, they're, they're optimistic. Yeah. Okay. So for others, they may not show, depending on how low the immunity had gone. Yeah. Uh, others, they may not show. Okay. So to visit the dentist twice a year. Yeah. You'll be you'll be amazed to know that if you make those uh, scheduled visits. You, you even spend less for your dental problems. Yeah. <laughs> because you only, you only be paying for consultation. And, and I've never known, actually, anyway, I don't know whether we can say that on the show. I've actually never known uh, what, what generally the rates of people taking care of their teeth looks like in terms of price ranges. Um, I have visited a dentist a few times in my life, I'll be honest. I don't do twice a year. And my next question, <laughs> I can see the way you are laughing. You, you're probably saying, oh my God. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but I would like, my next question will actually be about someone who hasn't visited the dentist twice a year uh, consistently. Like me, there have been years that I've skipped. There have been years that I visited the dentist. But that's not a consistent thing. I want to get consistent now, but... What could be the state of affairs for someone like me who hasn't been consistent? There's a study that was done yeah. some time back, and I still believe in its findings, that over 70% of the Zambian population yeah. has a dental problem, or they've had a dental problem at any given time. Mm. So that's how bad it is. Mm. We normally have dental problems that we do not notice, Mm. that they're there but they're there gradually you'll find that by by the time you are reaching in your 50s 60s you start having loose teeth <laughs> and, and and so therefore there's that association that as you grow old your, mm. your teeth should become weaker that's not true what makes them weaker is what you didn't do when you were young yeah to make them stronger okay okay so it boils back to why you need to have those checkups. If you have those checkups, we we'll discover things that could be a time bomb for you, and okay. so and sort them out. Okay. And, and 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 so you find that the person that visits the dentist regularly will probably not have so many dental problems as opposed to the one that does not visit. Mm. But then also. Um, it also depends on the lifestyles mm. and what we eat, stroke what we drink. Mm. You are a coffee lover. Yes. Um, <laughs> I should have exempted myself from coffee for this episode. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so, yeah. so you find that there Oh, I can actually see your teeth are quite white. 
Especially do you like, do self? No, no, no. I, I, I visit the dentist. Oh, you visit the dentist? I, I've got my special dentist. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've maintained that dentist. He sees me and in return, I see him. Because yeah. I mean, there's nothing that we can do. Yeah. We still have to have our teeth checked. Yeah. Uh, so it's the things that we eat. The refined sugars, the 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 the, 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 the beverages that we take. Yeah. Um, so would coffee be a bad thing for the teeth? Um or for the yeah, mouth? Yeah, yes and no. Mm. Yes and no. Because it depends on what you do after you take the coffee. Okay. If you take your coffee and you do not rinse your mouth, you do not do anything, chances are very high that your teeth are stained black. Yeah. And so and because the coffee, I want to believe it has sugar or... Yeah, I take my coffee, no sugar. Oh, okay. Mm. Um, you, you know, when you are just seated like that, we, we, we produce a, a coating around our teeth to keep them lubricated. Mm. So now it's that uh, coating that attracts the food that we've been eating the whole day and and stuff like that. And then what you are going to have immediately is uh, called plaque. Okay. If you do not disturb the plaque by visiting the dentist or engaging in personal oral hygiene habits, yeah, it will graduate to what we are calling uh, calculus. Okay. Calculus is the um, calcified matrix of, mm. the, o- o- of the plaque. It's, it, it's, it's like what you see in the... Um, the electric kettle yes in areas where you've got so much calcium yeah you you find that the the element is coated yeah even the it teeth, can actually develop into a really thick even the teeth it's like that ah and unfortunately that brings another problem one it starts to grow down towards the roots of the teeth and cutting off the ligaments that hold the teeth together and mm. Look therefore at that. making your, your teeth weak mm. they'll, they'll start to shake and you most likely or most definitely will have bad breath, <laughs> you know? So yeah. if, you, if you don't clean your teeth, you don't visit the dentist, you're going to have silent problems that will just be waiting to happen, mm. okay? And we've, we've seen in the hospitals, the person comes today, they are swollen like that. It's, it's just pass everywhere. Ooh. If, if you are not careful, we've even lost these people because they present late to the hospital. Yeah. Uh, and so it can get that bad. People can actually die. They, they, they actually die. It gets it gets worse because, first of all, people do not want to present to the hospital when they think it's not a problem. Yeah. They, they'll probably try home remedies. They know a neighbor who knows somebody. <laughs> you, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So by the time they are bringing you to the hospital, it may be too late. Mm. And so if if you come late, the burden of disease will be heavier on you because we're going to keep you for a longer time in the hospital. Okay, so like today when I, when I arrived in the morning, I was joking with my colleagues to say, why haven't we discharged this person? She's been around for two weeks. Mm. Let, let's send her home. She looks bright. She may end up getting an infection from the hospital. From the hospital. If, mm. if, if we think she's okay and she can come to the hospital for daily wound dressing, then that, that's what we should do. The hospital is not a very safe place to be, mm. especially if you have a lowered immunity as a result of a disease. Yeah. You end up catching anything that you would catch. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, how do you, this is a question I asked, uh, uh, the doctor that was here last week, yeah, I was asking him how they do operations on the nose and the ears, whether they have to cut the ear and open. In the same way, I would ask if someone has to have an operation done on their mouth, um, on their gums, their teeth, or anything like that, how exactly is that procedure like? I mean, given the space, the small space you have to work with. It depends on what you want to do. Mm. There, are, there are cases that we approach from outside. So we open up. So you can actually open up the... Yeah. You open up and approach from outside. Yeah. Sometimes if you have enough space, you approach from from within the mouth, depending on this, the, the, the extent of the... How deep you're trying to get. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. So what causes, um, you talked about the buildup of, um, of plaque into um, calcium, right? Yeah. What is that what we refer to as cavities or is cavities a different no, thing? No, cavities is a different and thing. And what leads to, what are cavities and what causes cavities? Okay, so here's how I normally like to summarize it. Yeah. You need to have a tooth. You need to have time. Yeah. You need to have food. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you allow the food to stay on the tooth for a long time and disturbed, Mm -hmm. You are a candidate for for cavities. Okay. Because so you say it's teeth. You need to have a tooth, time, and food. And and bacteria and, and bacteria. And okay. bacteria. But because at any given time, mm -hmm. humans have bacteria in the mouth, but it's it's normal flora. It's supposed to be there. Okay, so that's good bacteria. Good bacteria, mm -hmm. but if you overfeed it, <laughs> it, it becomes bad bacteria. Yeah. Okay. So you find that. Because you are providing the bacteria with food substrate. It's healthy. It's it, fat. It, it's it's active. Yeah. And so it produces the byproducts which are acidic in nature. And it's that, it's that acid produced in small quantities, but over time mm -hmm. that weakens the, the tooth. Mm -hmm. So that one day you just chew a, even, the, even a soft piece of meat. And the tooth will just crumble. Yeah. That's how a cavity starts. Okay. You, you may want to call it tooth decay, but in essence, it's not tooth decay per se. Okay. Because it starts from the process of continuous uh, demineralization. Mm -hmm. you, you, are, you are losing the, the mineral element of the tooth mm. because of the action of the acid that is produced by the bacteria which remains undisturbed mm -hmm. and it has plenty of food sitting on a tooth. L like you had said that uh, if you do not brush your teeth in the night before you sleep, yeah. you're going to have problems because now the bacteria has enough time, no disturbance. Because if the way we're talking like this, yeah. we're disturbing the bacteria. Oh, okay. Because we have to swallow. That's a relief. I think yeah. I should talk more. <laughs> we have to swallow, and so we're cleaning our mouths as we talk. Mm -hmm. uh, by the end of the day, I would have swallowed 1.5 liters of saliva. Oh, <laughs> sounds disturbing when you put it that I, way. I know, because you'll be thinking of it in a cup or something. <laughs> yes. So, But that, that helps in uh, keeping the mouth clean. Okay. Uh, by disturbing the bacteria but now you can imagine in the night you're not talking you're not active the bacteria will have a few day by the way what happens to saliva during sleep why is saliva not i mean in a day if you swallow up, up to 1.5 liters what happens during that eight hours of sleep in terms of saliva it's, production it's produced in very small quantities mm. it's produced in very small quantities that's why mostly when people wake up in the morning they are thirsty their mouth is dry, mm. uh, they have very bad taste because there was no natural lubrication that was happening. Mm. So the, the quantity is reduced. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, saliva is like breast milk. Uh, pardon the expression. Um, <laughs> yeah. if, 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 if the baby is not suckling, mm -hmm. the breast will not produce milk. Oh, so the breast naturally stops producing milk once the baby stops. Yes. Mm. So it's the same way saliva, sal sal saliva reduces if, yeah. you, if you are not using it to lubricate as you are talking. Okay. Yeah. So it's a demand and supply yeah. kind of kind economics of works everywhere. Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit that notification bell and share. Leave your questions in the comments if you have uh, questions and we'll have the doc back on the show to explain more uh, on this particular subject. The show is available Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. 20 hours Central African time, leave a subscription. Don't just be a ninja watcher. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. so uh, in explaining, uh, I was asking about a cavity. So then how do you define a cavity? Is a cavity an infection? Is it uh, a decay? Because from my understanding of what a cavity is, mm -hmm. I've always thought a cavity is what, you know, when you look at some people's teeth, they can have um, maybe brown spots, or dark spots where you can tell that the, the, the tooth is no longer 
uh, what it used to be. Yeah. So I've always assumed that is what we refer to as a, a cavity. So, so, so a cavity is an open space. A cavity is an open space. Yeah. Ah, okay. Like, like we say, the oral cavity. The, mm. the mouth is a cavity. Ah, oh, mm. chest cavity. Exactly. So, um, <laughs> oh, wow. the, 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 so tooth, right the, the, the tooth used to be solid. Uh-huh. But because of that continuum that I explained, it breaks in and leaves a hole. Produces so, so, an opening. So, so in short, you 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 would be very correct to to assume that a cavity is a hole, because okay. it, it, it actually is a hole. Okay. Yeah. The the tooth surface has been eaten off. Okay. Uh, and and, and, and what happens now yeah. is that food starts to compact in there. Mm. It starts to decay in there, and then because of the same acids that are produced, go into the uh, the, the pulp cavity, which goes down to the nerve, and then that's when you have your your toothache, uh, pain and swelling. Uh, exactly. Okay. So and if, what's if, if the worst the, that that could lead to? If you you div- you experience that pain due to a cavity, and you know it for a year, two years, three years, what's the worst that that could eventually lead to? Uh. And unfortunately, our, our our terms are very technical. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find a, a word that will, everyone of us will understand. I thought but, you but, just but, say death. <laughs> well, no, not necessarily. <laughs> I don't want to be so morbid. Yeah. So uh, what you will probably have is a dental abscess, okay. uh, or what we call an odontogenic infection. With abscesses, uh, the pus that is formed lo- looks around for where it can sit and continue to expand. Mm-hmm. So you'd find that you have an upper tooth and yet the, the, the abscess is down below there. Oh. Because it looks for where it... So the actual infection could be in a different spot yeah. and where the, the pus ends up Forms being... in another location. Wow. Yeah, so you... you, you as a doctor, you really need to do a thorough checkup to identify the problematic tooth. Yeah. And unfortunately for us, at, 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 at that level, there isn't much you can do apart from extract the tooth because that's the, uh, the, 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 the hallmark for treatment mm. is to remove the offending tooth. Mm. And are you able to replace yes. that tooth with yes. something else? Yes, yes. You have... Uh, uh, Roughly, I would think of uh, three ways to replace a tooth. Mm -hmm. You have your removable dentures. Yeah. Uh, These are artificial teeth that are fabricated in the lab. And these don't get infected, right? They they are plastic. (laughs) They are are plastic. Why don't we just replace the whole thing? But unfortunately, the natural ones are better. Okay. Because, for example, if you have the removable ones, with time, they become loose. Mm. And so you may be drinking your coffee the next thing you want to talk to me, I find that you've got no teeth, they've fallen into your coffee. <laughs> and I've swallowed them. <laughs> <laughs> you probably have swallowed them. So that's the first one, it's a removable. Yeah. Then you have the fixed, which are crown and bridges. Mm. And uh, we're now getting advanced in Zambia. Now we're moving with everyone. We're having what you're calling uh, dental implants. Mm-hmm. So it's the dental implants. Those are, for me, the best. Okay. But they come with a very high cost. So, so my, the cost of installing those would be high. It's it's very high. Mm. I wouldn't want to mention it on uh, on, on the air. On, on the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but I know it's prohibitive. So you but you have the other alternatives. But the best alternative is to avoid losing a tooth in the first place mm. by visiting us twice, only twice in a year. You know, only twice. Only twice. I know people who service their vehicles three times a year, depending on how mm, they mm. move around with the vehicles. But what's difficult is just going to the dentist, twenty minutes, just a checkup. Oh, well, it only. It I mean, it's minutes. just uh, taking the <laughs> taking the records. If you're a new patient, mm. taking the records, uh, getting to know you, do the examination, and then we give each other advice. If there's anything that we need to correct, we correct. Mm. I mean, you can create time. Yeah. No, that is that is true. I mm-hmm. think we create time for so many less important things. And and now, because mm. this is November, like we said at first, we have the oral health month. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, the government hospitals got a directive from the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Health, 
to say you do your dental checkups for free. Okay. Okay. The this is the first level hospitals like uh, Matero level one, Chilenge, you know that that level of mm-hmm. uh, service provision. These are doing free dental checkups. Mm. Just just walk in, go there, and I know certain private uh, dental institutions are also participating in this awareness. Yeah. They've removed their uh, consultation fees. So they're, they're, they're checking on, on, on you for free and giving you advice. But obviously, if, you, if they need to do anything corrective, maybe that's when you will pay. That's when they'll charge. Uh, yeah, but if, if you go there and get a clean bill, like there's nothing wrong with you, you don't pay anything. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So before we get into uh, some, of the, some of the more complicated questions, I... I may have to ask you about uh, tongue ties and uh, cancers and whatnot. I would like to to find out this based on what you've said. Yeah. Does this mean that brushing is not really effective in terms of keeping our teeth and our mouths healthy? Because, I mean, what's the purpose of brushing if still all these things find their way into... Am I allowed to ask you questions? Yes. Uh, you are. How long is your brushing session? Uh, on average, two minutes maybe. Okay, that's good timing. Um, okay. The problem that we have, mm. I've I've stuck around people. We, we, we brush as a matter of formality, mm. not to achieve the desired purpose. The desired purpose <laughs> is to have a clean mouth, no food remaining and stuff like that. But I've seen people just put toothpaste. Uh, brush in all directions yeah. and then off they go. But is it effective to uh, to get rid of the debt? Mm. Okay, I, I, I'm sure one of these days when you call us again we'll, we'll, we'll bring a model to demonstrate how teeth act, should, act should actual toothbrushing be. yes, because yeah. it, it must be correct. You know, you, you can take five minutes but if you're not doing the correct thing nothing will work. Yeah. I know people who brush left and right, left and right. Doesn't work. <laughs> what's the correct uh what's the correct you, 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 sequence? You, you, up and down? Up and down, toothbrush angled at uh, a certain angle. Yeah. Meticulously going up and down, tooth by tooth, section by section. Tooth by tooth. Section, section by, section. by section. Also massaging the gums. Okay. With a toothbrush, okay. which is why you don't need a very hard toothbrush. Okay. Because you need to massage the gums. I recently bought a really good toothbrush, actually. Yeah. It's uh, really soft. I was actually wondering why. When I bought it, I didn't think that was a texture because it was in a pack. Okay. And I was wondering why is it soft? Because you need to massage it, your It has teeth. reach. Yeah, you need, you, need to, mm. you need to massage your gums. Yeah. And people forget to brush their tongue. Mm. People forget to brush the roof of their mouths. Mm. And then if you still have your cavities, which you haven't had uh, sorted out, mm. the, the food will still remain com- compacted in there, mm. Mm. you know? And this is what I'll tell you. You, you go to a restaurant mm. or, or at a wedding. Yeah. When they're serving you food, uh, funny enough nowadays, they even serve you with uh, toothpicks. <laughs> Do you know what it says to me? Yeah. These are problems. Because you don't need a toothpick if your teeth, if your gums are hard enough. Are you really? If you don't have where food is sticking in the mouth. <laughs> so, so I just look around. Are you serious? <laughs> I just look around and that's why I'm saying I agree with that study that was done. Yeah. A long time ago. Yeah. Uh, God rest the soul of the gentleman that did the study. Mm. He's now the late. But... um. I think his findings are still very true. Just yeah. just go to any restaurant. Go to Mateveto. Go anywhere. <laughs> people will be moving out. Even with in our a, homes. <laughs> people will be moving out with a toothpick. With a toothpick, yeah. You know? But, but for a dental person, that tells you that something wrong here. I'm, I must fill out that space that they are uh, mm. poking. And unfortunately, if you don't know how to use a, uh, a toothpick... Mm you end up injuring your gums mm. and making yourself susceptible to other gum diseases. Mm. You even erode the, um, the, the, the bone that is supposed to be high up there. But every day you are poking on it, it becomes soft, it crumbles. By the time I come to check on you, I would find that 
you, you have what we call pockets. Yeah. Because you're always poking in that place. And so because it's opened up, each time you eat, food goes there. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So a toothpick is a bad sign. <laughs> if you go to a place yeah. where people are eating and everyone walks out without a toothpick, just know that you're in the right place. Yeah. But not where you're, they're serving you part of the dish yeah. is a toothpick. Then you know there's a problem. I think I will be very careful going to eat with a dentist co- 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 because they're know, very observant. <laughs> no, no, because you know there are other things that you can do to sort of remove the food that is stuck. Yeah. Uh, you, you can actually floss the food out. Okay. You, you, using floss, we have it in all the supermarkets, the good supermarkets, mm. they have floss. Or you can just rinse your mouth, just with plain water, you rinse, and then you let the tongue uh, remove the other food that are stuck. Mm. Because it's not possible that you you, you manage to brush three times a day mm. if, if you are waking from away from home. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that might be a bit of a challenge yeah. for most people. For yeah. a lot of us. Mm. So uh, with studies and stuff like that, people have actually concluded that you can effectively have good oral hygiene just by brushing twice. Okay. Twice a day. Mm. Okay. Uh, so twice a day, two minutes plus, it's sufficient enough to avoid dental problems. Okay. Does that still mean we still have to visit the, de- the dentist? Yes, because eh, not so many of us will brush effectively. Mm. Mm. So, okay. Anyway, that, that does make sense. <laughs> what are... Because it's, a, it's the effectiveness that matters. Yeah. Because people will come to the hospital and say, Doc, I, don't, I can't understand this. I brush my teeth every day, three times a day. But look, I'm losing a tooth every, every other month. Mm. Where is the problem? For me, the answer is very simple. It means you're not brushing effectively. Effective brushing. Yeah. Mm. You, you could be brushing six times a day. <laughs> but if you are not effective, you are worse off than the guy that brushes once a day effectively. effectively. Then uses other methods of uh, keeping the mouth clean, like mm. fl- flossing. Mouthwash, is that any good? It is, but there's one danger with it. Mm. It has sugary chemicals. Oh. So you may end up bringing a problem on yourself. Other mouthwashes will actually stain your teeth. Mm. Other mouthwashes, because they will give you a very sweet uh, smell mm-hmm. temporarily, it may mask the dirty condition in your mouth. Mm. You, okay? I've, I've seen those people that use uh, oral perfumes. Yeah. <laughs> that, that just masks the dirt. You haven't cleaned, but you just put perfume in there. Mm. You are fresh for a while, but the problem still lingers on. Mm. Yeah. Okay, um, <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> that has gotten me thinking a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. So does that mean we should avoid mouthwash altogether? No, you have to use it according to prescription by the doctors. So we don't just buy mouthwash from a from a. It, it has to serve a purpose. Um. It has to. Say, it, it it shouldn't be a substitute for tooth brushing. Yeah. yeah. But can it complement your tooth brushing? It does. It does. That's uh, actually, that's the role. Mm. To complement. To complement. But you you have to be careful how you use it. Okay. But the effective weapon that you have Mm. for almost all dental problems, is just a toothbrush Mm. and toothpaste. Yeah. Sometimes you may not even uh, need toothpaste. All you need is salt solution. Okay. That's it. You are home and dry. You salt know? solution. I remember learning about that when we were much younger, primary school. They taught us about using mango. I, yes, yes. Mango um, stems. And they, they, they call it uh, muswak. I was surprised to know that muswak is actually not a Zambian word. Oh, really? Yeah, you can actually Google it. You'll find that it's th- those toothbrushes we make by chewing edible branches, uh, branches and then, mm. then you brush the, the good old way. Yeah, the good old way. Yeah. You'd wonder how the old people kept their teeth in. Eh? Yeah, it's, a, it's the same method mm. it's like because i would be surprised when we visit the village you find the granddad is always having not a toothpick but that yeah that brush he's, he's constantly the, the, the whole day cleaning his very teeth. clean teeth mm. and no dental problems nice so uh among us the things i 
got to encounter when I was reading a little on dental health and whatnot were tongue ties. And uh, I would like you to tell us a bit on that uh, okay. issue of tongue ties as well as oral cancers and how okay. frequent you see these cases. Uh, and yeah, I would like you to, to give us a bit more. I didn't read much on tongue ties. I thought I would learn from you. Okay. Yes. So I'd like to hear more on, on that. It sounded like a, <laughs> it okay. sounded like a strange thing to me. Uh, so, um, tongue ties. Yeah. I, I exaggerated in the in the community because the community has that myth that if you have a tongue tie, you probably not be able to speak. So, they get worried when they hear that their child has a tongue tie. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so they seek remedies outside the the profession. Mm. Only is it two months ago we, we, we lost a baby in Siavonga okay. w- where they did their own treatments at home and the child died mm. because they trusted more the the traditional providers of health mm. than the the, the the conventional. So what what the tank tie is to me mm-hmm. is you when a person is born. Yeah. That they have that little strand under the tongue. Yeah. Okay. And it's everyone has it. You have one on top of the lip, one the other one on the lip here, the other one inside the tongue, mm-hmm. just in the midline. Okay. So for other people or other babies, when they are born, it's t- it's tight. It holds the tongue down. Mm-hmm. Okay. So for me, the immediate worry if a child has a tongue tie. Is not whether they'll be able to speak or not. Mm. Okay, is are they able to feed effectively? Mm-hmm. Because if the tongue is held down, it will not effectively go up and down to massage the the teat of the breast so that they can express milk. Mm-hmm. Because that's how your milk is gotten from the to create that circle effect. Exactly. Mm. So so if it's if it's held down. Mm-hmm. the cycling effect goes down as well. So the child may go into malnutrition and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. For me, that's the primary worry. Yeah. Speaking is secondary because uh, if a tongue is tied, what will happen is that you'll probably not have very good pronunciation. Yeah, but you will somehow be able to... You will speak because speaking does not come from the mouth. It has to be generated in the brain. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. The, the, the mouth is probably part of the speaker system. Mm. But this, everything else comes from from, from the, the brain, brain to come out from the speakers. So does that mean people who have a stutter, it's a mind issue that they it's, need it's, to deal it's, with? It's more of a mind thing. It's not, it's not a local problem. It's to do with the speech center. Mm. Yeah. So even the treatment is focused on the brain. Is that something that falls under your field of work, uh, speech and no, or, no. Or is there a field that deals with, with that particular there, there, there's a field okay. specifically for that. Uh speech and speech therapy. Okay. Yeah. For, for them the job is to make you talk nicely. Mm. Uh, if if you have a heavy accent, you can still go to them <laughs> and, <laughs> and they'll probably tutor you how, how to pronounce words and stuff oh, like really? that. Oh really? <laughs> I, I'm just joking, but yeah. <laughs> um, but but uh, they're useful in terms of uh, correcting uh, speech defects that are related to the brain. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a very big unit at UTH, mm. the speech and therapy, speech speech therapy center. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the ones. So tongue tie. We'll go back to tongue tie. Mm-hmm. It's just the tongue that is held down by the normal strand under yeah. there. But this is what I want to tell the people. They shouldn't worry that the person will not talk. That's a list of their issues. For me, that's the... It's, because at any stage, mm-hmm. we can do the operation. So it requires an operation to correct? Uh, to sort of mm. uh, loosen it up, Yes. Mm. But I've seen old people in their twenties with a tongue tie. Oh, really? But they've gone through school. They've gone and they uh, can talk. In fact, nicely. Speech is a learned yeah. uh, maneuver. Yeah. So you you get to adapt with what you have. I guess that's where all these things like lisps, 
four in, in four in two, yeah. and how people are able to eventually yeah. overcome them. Yeah, uh, and the tongue is just effective in about four or five uh, words. Mm. Uh, that, that those, use, those few words where your tongue has to touch your, uh, your, yeah. your upper teeth like like teeth itself th- like teeth those yeah. that and they're all already you're just talking about t t t t so it's yeah. t it's f i've forgotten the other few words mm, mm. yeah so you can learn to suck to, to, to divert around <laughs> it <laughs> to yeah. go around it but but, but unfortunately mm. And all the cases that I've seen go wrong, mm-hmm. there's always an old lady that would have examined the baby <laughs> at home. <laughs> and um, knows of a, an ancient remedy. And she, she would have examined and reached a diagnosis that this child has a tongue tie. Mm-hmm. And so she would even put fear in the mother that this child may not speak. Mm. And so we hear, apart from the midline uh Frenum. Yeah. They are also told there's something in the sides. Mm. So when they come to you, you really have to examine to check the whole mouth to satisfy them that you've really checked. <laughs> if you do not, they will go back to the community. Mm. And the people in the community, because they want money, they will never say there's nothing. They are, not, they are never short of solutions. They, they will not tell you that there's mm. nothing wrong. Yeah. The other case that we had to sort out started from Chainda. Mm. This woman was told that the child has a tongue tie. She went to China clinic. Mm. They said yes, the tongue tie is there. Went to another clinic. Said yes, it's there, but we do not have the the professionals to do it. Mm-hmm. Go to Levy. So I don't know why the mother felt lazy to go to Levy. Made the U-turn and went to China, back <laughs> to the compound. Yeah, and found a market junior. Who did the operation? But then she noticed that the blood is not stopping Mm. from the site. That's when now she had the time to come to live. Mm. It was almost too late, you know. So this is a message we really need to get out there to our people that even if somebody has a tongue tie, don't panic. Yeah, they'll still talk. Yeah, they'll still talk for as long as they are feeding. Then there's no problem. A tank tie is nothing to worry about. Mm. Okay. okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, I would like you to educate us on cancers as okay. it may relate to lifestyle and also how people can identify if there's any sort of threat uh, to their dental health in terms of a cancer. Because I know we've, we've basically talked about things that uh, would affect the, the mouth on the basis of how well we are taking care uh, how will we visit the dentist? But I want to talk about things that may be a little bit out of people's control. Yeah. I don't know whether things like uh, mouth cancers are related to how well people are taking care of their mouth yeah. uh, or, or there are things that are beyond their control. Um, for, for, for the most oral cancers that we have, yeah, they are lifestyle linked. Okay. Alcohol consumption, mm-hmm. cigarette smoking, and now we have a bigger challenge. You go to any nightclub or any bar, mm. you find a group of women smoking that bottled thing. Shisha. Another group here. Everyone is smoking that thing. Yeah. And that is That's causing... nicotine, eh? Exactly. So yeah. it's now bringing issues for us in the dental field <laughs> because we are, we are seeing oral cancers starting to shoot up in a population that would, non, would not normally have it. Mm. Okay. So smoking alcohol consumption mm. the foods that we eat i always ask every doctor that comes here because uh funny enough you've all mentioned smoking yeah. and i i like for the sake of the viewers out there because when you say smoking it's a it's a it sounds like a blanket statement does that include all kinds of smoking because yes. people smoke different things yes it's all kinds it's all kinds of smoking all kinds um mm. th- there's the ordinary cigarettes yeah then there are those that will get tobacco and mm-hmm. put under the under the tongue. Mm-hmm. That's all falling under the smoking. Mm-hmm. Then there are those that will actually sniff it mm-hmm. in sunko and all the other types of mm-hmm. tobacco. So let me not call it smoking. Let me rephrase and say uh, consumption of uh, uh, tobacco. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I think also in asking whether it's a blanket statement, 
that's what I wanted to find out because people are smoking different things. I know some people do nicotine, some people do marijuana, some people do tobacco, some people do uh, all kinds of yeah, for as vaping. Long, for, for, for as long as you are inhaling things that you shouldn't be inhaling, yeah, that's smoking. Okay, other, and so uh, that can uh, all would, lead to oral cancers. Others put it direct on the skin. I mean, on the on the lip inside the lip. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I've seen their what are they called? They look like tea bags. Yes. They look like tea bags. Yes. They put them just under the. Uh, that's even the worst, mm. because that one gives you cancer of the mouth. And it's written on the pack. <laughs> yes. Um, for the others, you yeah. may, it may bypass the mouth, and go and affect your lungs. Mm. Okay. Uh, for the others, just on top of the uh, the palate of the mouth. Yeah. The roof of the mouth. Yes, the roof of the mouth, the tongue, the lips. We've mm. seen a lot of these cancers mm. just popping up. Okay, so that's where we are. So basically, in order to reduce the risk of these cancers, what you're saying is uh, ingesting substances. Maybe it's, it's a turnaround of our uh, lifestyles. Mm. Okay. Apart from these... Uh, substances that may be classified as alcohol and drugs is there any other thing we're ingesting like food food yes um that affects our mouth in that way yes yes what particular foods can you think of from the top of your head spices spices yes spicy spicy foods uh others are considered to be what's the word carcinogenic able to cause cancer okay yeah even certain vegetables that we eat would give us cancer now I'm interested. Tell me more about vegetables that we eat. No, not all of them. <laughs> no, Set, it's a joke. <laughs> certain, certain, certain vegetables. And unfortunately, in life, yeah, there, there's nothing that will not give you a problem. That's that's fully safe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you take too much water, you get water intoxication. Yeah. Or you even dilute your your bodily fluids. Mm, so electrolytes. So there's nothing that you'd say, if I just do this, I'm 100% safe. Mm-hmm. So uh, basically, I like to summarize, like, um, for cancers, we should just watch out for what we smoke, mm. what we drink, mm-hmm. and the certain foods we eat. Mm-hmm. Okay? There are certain uh, beverages that when you drink, you can actually feel on your on your throat. Mm. You can actually feel the burning sensation on your tongue. Mm you know and certain uh, b- uh beers that people drink mm. you can tell it's already starting to to eat up the lips you mm. find somebody with red lips and mm. stuff like that you check in their mouth and i don't know where the connection is it, but it's always there people who smoke and drink mm. have a higher chance of who, having poor oral hygiene okay so now the unfortunate part is you combine poor oral hygiene mm. plus those other factors, you, you are a likely candidate for... They're too high to brush their teeth. <laughs> so you are a likely candidate for yeah. cancer, for dental diseases and stuff like that. But obviously, certain cancers are genetic linked. Yeah. Okay, so we, we can't... Entirely blame, blame lifestyles. Blame lifestyles. Yeah. Certain people are just prone to have those cancers. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Uh, other cancers are age related. Mm. Okay. But although I can't think of any that is oral 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 cancer that is age related, but I'm thinking of, for example, prostate cancer. Mm, 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 mm. Your chances of getting it as a male increase as you grow older. As you grow older. Yeah. Okay. Same with uh, for our women colleagues, uh, cervical cancer. The chances increase as you. As you grow, as you become sexually active, mm. and so on and so forth. So, you must strike a balance. In fact, speaking of sexual activity, uh, to conclude the show, one last one last question. Yes, yes. Right. Kissing. Um, I won't get too explicit, uh, mm-hmm. or maybe for the sake of the viewers, just to cover a wider variety of people. You know, I've got a... Anyway... How does kissing, how can kissing affect one's oral health? And not just kissing. Maybe we can go further because I know you're a doctor. You have seen the strangest of things. Mm-hmm. But people engage in oral sex, for example, 
how do all these things uh, that when people sexualize their mouths, uh, how, what effect can this have on our dental health? Mm. The ordinary mouth to mouth kissing, yeah. the chances are not very high to get these diseases. Mm-hmm. Okay, you can't get tooth decay. It's studies are still ongoing. Yeah. Okay. You, it's it's difficult to pinpoint, but obviously, if you're talking of oral sex and so on, yeah, chances for you to get um, uh, happy simplex and the happy family of uh, viruses are very high, mm. and those have been also linked with uh, certain cancers like squamous cell carcinoma. Mm. These are cancers of the lips and whatever. Mm. Because a, a man can't get cervical cancer. Yeah. But they can actually get it by if they sexualize kissing. Yeah. They can get and keep in the mouth. So that's uh, mm. HPV as a result yeah. of... Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So... Uh, so the, the risk that, that is more with is men there. than it is with women? It's it's it's, it's uh, either way. Either way. But higher on the men, of course. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell. I enjoyed the conversation. I hope you guys did too. And my coffee has now grown cold. You can tell from my thermal cup. Anyway, we have been glad to have the doc on the show once again. Uh, the show is available Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Mondays are for political discussions. Wednesdays are for the educative segment. And Fridays are for Bible Talks. We will have another doctor in studio next week. We are, we're still we're concluding our medical conversations next week, Wednesday. Um, but if you have any questions on this particular subject, um, we will definitely take record of them. And when next we have uh, the doctor in the studio, we'll ask him those questions. So do leave your comments, leave a like on the video, and leave a subscription. Doc, we've been so happy to have you here. I've learned so much. Okay. Uh, I still have a lot of questions I'm curious about, but I'll bank them for for the next time. The no, next time. No, no problem. The next time you're here. So we're, yeah. we're really glad to have you. I hope you enjoyed the show. No, I did. I, I enjoyed myself. I was... Uh, this is a different type. I'm yeah. used to the live shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this is okay because at least I'm even freer to make mistakes. Yes, yes, yes. Which you can tease off. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 I know, Doc, you can also admit I'm just a smart guy. <laughs> oh, yes. I ask the right questions. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Uh, you, you are a lively person. <laughs> thank you, yeah, thank you. Sure. Yeah, so let, let the viewers take advantage of this month. Yeah. Um, get a, a, a free dental check. Or if they are going to pay, let them pay. But at least let them use November for having the dental check if they've never been to a dentist this is the opportunity for them to see a dentist yeah we, we are available at this now the coverage is it's quite wide we're everywhere yeah and i have your number so yes yes no problem. i can give you a call anytime no, no problem yeah. <laughs> yeah thank you doc uh mm. we'll see you soon and mm. we'll see you on friday bye bye okay. hey like what you see i know you do Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao!